We open on a museum which is owned by this old guy, Hubert. A lady who previously visited but left quickly returns with a so-called art critic who was interested in seeing the work of a particular artist that's being featured. There's no harm done. Didn't steal nothing. I <laughs> checked that out. I love this guy. I was so impressed by Vivica Nanda's work that I dragged Roger Darcy all the way up here. He was wounded in Vietnam. Roger is a colonel in the Green Berets. Well, Gotta love that musical cue. Where, where is it? Where's what? Your, your green beret. It takes Hubert a second to remember what a green beret is. Hero, right? <laughs> yeah. A uh, military man. That's interesting. Or it could just be that he's senile or something. Hubert really wants to get Roger to play chess with him. Well, not right now. Well, maybe a little later. Yeah, I, I, I'm always looking for a game. You know, it really stirs me up inside. He eventually gets to see the art, and of course it's horrifying. Where is this artist from? Oh, he's from a place called, uh, uh, Nipple. Nipple. Nepal? That's it. Acrylic latex? What is that? Oh, no, no, don't touch. No, no, you mustn't touch. It's made out of some, uh, uh food stuff. Uh, hardened yogurt, that's what he told me. But how do you keep it from decomposing? <laughs> Gee, that asthma of his sure hits at convenient times. I used to have me a cotton farm up in Maine. I had to let it go. Yeah, everything I grew, I was allergic to. So he goes to answer the phone, leaving these two alone, and it's revealed that Roger is not an art critic at all. What? Don't you see? It's a young boy in the portrait. The picture was right underneath Penny's in the missing persons file. Turns out he had a daughter named Penny who ended up missing. This isn't going to be very easy. Look. What? Good Lord, it's Penny. It's my daughter. He mentions it to Hubert and asks when the painting was done. You see, I've only been here about five weeks. That's right. He told me that he painted these things in India. No, that's absurd. The lady, Lucille, shows him the flyer with the missing boy. He's been missing since July. They appear in the same part of the state at the same time, and they both end up... Well, don't, don't get your bottles in an uproar. Now, now remember, these are young people. Uh, maybe, maybe she met a handsome young fella, fell in love and ran away with him. Take a look at it. That's not love you see on her face. That's pain! As he pulls on it, her ring falls out. She would have never taken that ring off! Never! Yeah, we can kind of see where this is going... somewhat. Now listen, listen! Now there's got to be a logical explanation for this. At this point, it's hard to tell if Hubert knows what's going on or not. He seems nervous and anxious to offer explanation, but it's possible that he just doesn't know how to deal with this information and is maybe worried about what all this could mean for his museum. <laughs> Well, <coughs> she an only child? Yeah. And your wife? Just a... Yeah, it's terrible, and terrible. Well, I know how sorry you are. I mean, you haven't got much of a family left. Gee, if I didn't know any better, I might think he's implying that no one would miss Roger if he disappeared. Here's to it. Wow. <sighs> Lucille talks about bringing a friend from the state police office. This lady just knows everybody. Nepal, I have to go to Nepal. No, no, you don't. Anyway, it turns out that the artist isn't in Nepal after all. Well, he's one of those who makes a big frou fra fra about his privacy. He lives in a cabin way up on uh, Whitewater Ridge. Let's go. Lucille wants to talk to her friend first. Well, what are you going to tell him? A story about a painting and a, and a ring? They're going to want real proof. I mean, it's evidence. There could be fingerprints on the ring or something else to indicate where it's been. But no, he wants to go to the cabin, and Hubert is actually willing to take him. But he asks Lucille to stay behind and keep an eye on the museum. Say, you know, I'll bet you're one of them Irish people. Yes. I knew it! Irish! A Chinese now. I, I never did get to see any of those Chinese folk well. This guy is so weird. I seriously love him. So after they're gone, she starts picking at the hair of the painting of the boy and finds actual hair underneath. It's real. It's not a painting. It's real. Oh, no, no! And she's trapped. It's dead! What am I gonna do now? Interesting title drop there. The one entitled Portrait of the Artist looks like someone escaped from that one. Also, I think I see a baby in that one. Yikes. Everything seems back to normal when the guys come back. Either way, there was nothing in the cabin to indicate that an artist lived there. 
Anyway, Lucille is gone, of course, and Roger thinks that there was a struggle and something might have happened to her. Why didn't Nebuchadnezzar come back here? He could have come here while we were out. He's done something with her. He's taken her. So, naturally, he starts moving things around. I'm starting to think that forensic science doesn't exist in this episode's universe. It is interesting that he stops and looks at this book, though. If you were really, really paying attention, you might have noticed this book on Hubert's desk in the opening, and it's entitled Human Types. Which is odd. So Hubert calls a friend of his. I literally cannot make out what he's saying, but I'm guessing the guy is from the local police or something. Yeah, well, I'll see you when you get here. Yeah. In the meantime, they finally play chess. QB is so happy about this. Turns out that Roger is really good at it. And he's beginning to think that Hubert isn't who he says he is. Oh, I resign. You have made seven moves. Now, I haven't lost often, my friend. Probably because former cotton farmers don't tend to be masters at chess. What the ding dong hell? <laughs> Let, let's wait until uh, Orville gets here and you can ask him who I am. Yeah, the phone is out, so he never made that call. And I think there's something in the back there you didn't want me to see. What is that? He finds the portrait of the artist. I'm not Somebody or something was in there. Really? The smoke that filled up the room earlier wasn't just for dramatic effect. Apparently it's supposed to paralyze or knock out the victim. And now we know what happened to Lucille. You can tell it's her by the pattern on the dress. Roger catches the door before it closes with a crowbar and manages to escape. But he breaks back in later that night. He starts trying to cut around his daughter with a knife and pry it apart with a crowbar. <coughs> he also brought a gun with him when he returned. I like that there's a piece with a victim's shoes, like nothing goes to waste. Looks like the artist has returned to his painting and guess who it is? Let's put a new face on things. Well, there's a reveal I wasn't expecting. I guess we were gonna get a monster one way or another. You're a hero, right? <laughs> yeah, a military man. Meanwhile, the daughter calls out from her painting. Yeah, the victims aren't dead bodies like you might have thought at first. They're alive and aware in there. It's too late for me. Run, father, the gas! I'm guessing she can only be heard because of the cracks he made. I'm always looking for a game, you know. Well, okay, there's another reveal I didn't expect. I don't think he did either. And I thought the last episode was weird. What the fuck? Sometime later... Over there, you can see the everyday gear of an earthling male, age 45. Made him play a game they call chess. All the long ride home. Um, yeah, aliens. <laughs> this episode is so weird, I wasn't sure I liked it at first. But the more I think about it, the more it grows on me. Even if it is a bit of a train wreck with how out there it is. Here's the thing though, I really think it's totally aware of that, considering the casting. Speaking of which, Hubert was played by Darren McGavin, or the old man from A Christmas Story, and he is amazing in this. I love how he comes across as some dumb redneck farmer type, but there are little hints here and there that something isn't right about him. That bit about him having to remember what Green Beret means and being excited to meet an Irish person while disappointed that he never got to meet a Chinese person, that stuff could mean that he just isn't too bright or is just eccentric. But once you learn that he's actually an alien, it makes a little more sense. Also how he just downs that glass of alcohol. Maybe it has no effect on him. As for the asthma, that could be one of two things. Either he has a little trouble breathing our air and that inhaler has the sort of air from his home planet, or maybe being around that gas has been wreaking havoc on his lungs. Either way, I like the way the and I must scream trope was implemented here. It's a really weird way to do it. Not sure how these people are alive, but aliens or something. This episode is just so unapologetically weird that I kind of admire it for that. 
This was directed by Gerald Kotz, credited under a different name, who also did Parents from Space and New York Honey. This is his last episode of Monsters, so that's an interesting little trilogy of episodes he was involved in, and it ended on a good note. I guess that's about all I have to say about this one. Next up is A Bond of Silk. See you then.